Hey, welcome back to the Ready State. We're following up on a post we put up a few weeks ago where you know, we're saying, hey look, we've got to be thinking about pelvic floor dysfunction in men and women. And that response to, well, where do I even begin? So a couple of things that we like to think about is, hey, how can we upregulate the system? Sometimes we tend to think that we always need exercise, and sometimes what we need to do is put some input into the system, sort of wake the system up. And if you've had a pelvic floor that hasn't been functioning very well for a very long time, it's easy to sort of think, hey, I can't recruit it. So Uliana Bunda, or I'm doing Kegels, or belly button to spine, or sphincter, you can't even feel what's going on. So a couple things that we like is one is that we know we can break high tone with contract relax. So just putting some tension into a system and having it contract is a really powerful way to do an isometric that's really focused because I'm getting some feedback into the system by proprioception through input and touch. And sometimes that's enough to start to get the ball rolling and just reconnect the brain to what's happening around the pelvic floor. One of the things that we see though is also that sometimes our athletes just get stiff. And one of our therapists describes sometimes the hip rotators as sort of occupying a lot of space. And so what we can think of is, hey, can I improve some aspect of the system? So in a previous post, we talked about looking at rotation, but now let's move inside to the pelvic floor. And without even talking about the pelvic floor, or you can imagine your pelvic floor as looking at your pubic symphysis. So if you went down below your belly button and came to the bone of your pubis, that pubic bone is the insertion and really the top and front of your pelvic floor. You can look at your ischial tuberosities, right, the aspect of the bony part of the bottom of your pelvis that you should be sitting on or can sit on that are weight bearing, those are your sit bones even though there's no such thing. And then you can look in the back as your coccyx as the back of that triangle. And so for us, when we're talking about the system, we're not just talking about specifically the small musculature pelvic floor, we're looking at the whole system. And so even you'll see that there's a lot of meat in and around that special spot that can be affected with some contract relax or a little subtle work. And we've had plenty of athletes with not a lot of dysfunction that they're expressing through loss of, loss of erection or peeing themselves, but actually have some strange occult glute dysfunction. And when we start to just upregulate that system, we can start to see sort of the lights getting turned back on. So I can't say specifically this will help you, but it can't hurt you. Couple models, one is that I can just take a little towel and I can sit on a towel and do all of the work I'm doing with just a little pressure ridge. This is a lacrosse ball, which for many of our athletes is gonna be way, way too hard and too big and too small and too square. It's not perfect, but you probably have a ball laying around. Feel free to go squishy on this and that's totally fine or sit on a really squishy surface if this is the only ball you have. But what I'm gonna basically do is move that ball around the areas and it's the rules of engagement are very clear stay away from the holes seems reasonable right so but any area attachment onto near those bony end ranges or bony positions um, what ends up happening is this gives me a real opportunity to contract relax which means I take a big breath in and I just build a con isometric contraction pain-free just putting some tension around the ball and then I'll slowly relax off that tension as I breathe out. So I'm trying to teach my brain to chill out and sometimes when we have a high tonic or a pelvic floor that's under a lot of tension, one of the things that can happen is that it's working too hard and so when we teach the body to relax, we're actually teaching those systems to turn off and become more normal. So what we can do then is take a big breath in, contract into that ball in any one of those diamond areas right, staying away from the holes, and then slowly relax. So what we get there is an isometric, and then as we relax, slowly over the count of eight, as we exhale, we tie the brain into the system, we rewire how the brain is thinking about this position, we're getting some positive, proprioceptive input into the system, right, we're just telling the body this is where this is in space and time, and then that slow exhale allows us to have an eccentric control, which is what we call tempo, which is slow eccentric loading of that tissue. Loading, but it's just not moving very far, but as I slowly let the tension off, what I'm doing is an eccentric motor control drill. So try a ball, put it in some part of your nether region. There's my ischial tuberosity. Now I'm just on the other side of my ischial tuberosity. And what you'll see is that there's a lot of connective tissue systems, adductors, hamstrings, 
pelvic floor, short hip rotators that can play a big game here, even aspects of your glutes that feel like, whoa, I have never ever touched or talk to that aspect of my body and giving it some natural small input for a few minutes might be a nice way to begin a conversation about restoring your pelvic floor function. So first goal, have a dose and a response, set a couple minutes, get some work done. When it stops feeling good or you stop making change, stop. We'll get the rest of it tomorrow. Hope this helps.